Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and I, I'm answering a question. Ed uh, commented and he was curious where to find schematics for uh, passive high pass and low pass filters at the line level. So that means uh, filters that you can use before your amp or inside your amp but at the line stage, at the line level. So there's not that many schematics around. Uh, there's one that I will dig up from the 50s, the one that's in that uh, paper that I mentioned that uses uh, the Ampex amplifiers for uh, uh, doing that uh, listening comparison. But right now I will show you how you can calculate them on your own. And we are going to uh, VCAP uh, crossover calculators. So, so they have uh, on their website a, a tool, an online app to calculate your speaker crossover values. And here you go, you can calculate first order, second, third, fourth. And, and also there's Zobel and Alpad calculators as well. So I am using these calculators for uh, reference purposes. Just I have this page bookmarked or just like v-cap.com. And uh, if you type into Google like a VCAP crossover calculator, then it will bring this up or you can go to the VCAP home web page and get it there. And when you uh, design crossover for your loudspeaker, let's say you have like an 8 ohm nominal loudspeaker and you want, let's say, uh, 1 kilohertz crossover at first order. So now we are looking at the first order calculator. You enter the high pass impedance, which means this is the uh, impedance of your tweeter. Low pass impedance, impedance of your woofer and the crossover frequency. That's where you want the minus three dB point for both of these guys. And then it will calculate the values together for both of them. So the C1 means that it will be the capacitor for the high pass filter. And the L1 is the inductor for the low pass filter. So the, which means you have to pay, put this inductor uh, with your woofer and, and the capacitor with your tweeter. And how does it look like? You can click on additional information and here you go. It shows you the schematics, the diagram, how you wire it up. So for the low pass, you put the inductor, also called as a choke, uh, between the uh, your speaker wire and one of the uh, pins on your woofer. So basically you connect your speaker to your amp through a choke. The same thing for uh, for your tweeter, for your high pass crossover, but there you use a capacitor. So this is a first order filter network. And uh, the difference between using this up between your amplifier and your loudspeaker or between uh, your preamp and your amplifier is the impedance. So to calculate the value to give you an attenuation at a certain frequency level, you need the impedance of the device that's following your inductor or following your capacitor. When we are talking about loudspeaker, the impedance is very, very low. So it's somewhere between 4 ohms and 16 ohms for most loudspeakers. And uh, so when we use calculations for these guys, we use those very low values. And when you have your uh, line level, so when you put your crossover, passive crossover element in front of your amp, then you use the input impedance of your amplifier as a value for here. And we can do that here in the crossover. So in that case, the input impedance for 
most vacuum tube amplifiers is 100 kilo ohm so you enter 100 1 2 3 100k and here as well we enter 100 1 2 3 and as you see we are getting a very strange values here it says you are getting 15,000 so almost 16,000 milli henrys what, what does that mean it means that basically you need a 15.9 henry choke that is quite high inductance if you want to cross it over at a kilohertz and for the capacitor it says zero microfarad why does it give us zero because it's so low value that it does not register on the microfarad scale if you want to know exactly what value it is let's take out one zero two zeros so it says 0 0.16 microfarad if the impedance was 1k now because we are using 100 times bigger impedance than that so it's not 1k but 100k so our capacitance will be 100 times lower than that so instead of 116 nanofarads because 0 0.16 microfarad is 116 nanofarads in this case for a 100k input impedance you need 1.6 nanofarad capacitor in your amplifier in the signal path to attenuate your signal as a first order filter at 1 kilohertz and you can do that uh, more uh, you do not need to add an extra uh, capacitor in front of your amplifier because most uh, amplifiers inside have coupling capacitors what you need to do is use a 1.6 nanofarad coupling capacitor provided your amp does not use feedback because if your amplifier uses feedback and you put a capacitor within the feedback loop the feedback is going to correct the effects of that capacitor and uh, the crossing over frequency will not be at 1 kilohertz, it will be much lower than that. So in that case, if your amplifier uses error correction, which means negative feedback, then you have to add it as a separate capacitor before the first stage in your amplifier outside the feedback loop so we are then using a 1.6 nanofarad capacitor and a one and a 16 henry choke basically so this is what a crossover would look like for a pa passive uh, filter at the line level if you are crossing at one kilohertz with a hundred k input impedance uh, a pair of power amplifiers so i hope uh, this uh, helps and uh, if you want to play around with that it's really easy using this calculator and as you see uh, the difficulty here uh, is with the inductor because you will need very high inductances and these inductors are big and uh, not that cheap so this is the reason why uh, in today's world they are not uh, favored as much uh, because uh, we want to use a, a resistor instead that costs a penny or really cheap components and this is not a cheap component and this is not small either yet you will see that it's not that hard to find you can find such value inductors maybe for even at uh, $20, $10, $20 each. But you will be very, very, very hard pressed to find an inductor of exactly that value. So what you can do is find something that's the closest value. Maybe let's say a, a 15 Henry inductor. That's a common value. And then let's, let's just go for a hunt here. Uh, where would be the crossover frequency for that so if you increase it to 1100 hertz now it's 14.5 it's a little bit somewhere in between 
so basically oh wait wait i took out zero there so if you have a oh wait one more zero uh so basically if you have a 15 whoa I'm messing up the hertz is there. That's not what I wanted. Huh? Yeah, something like that. Uh, so around uh, a little above a kilohertz if you have a, a 15 Henry choke instead of a 16 Henry choke. And I can tell you that it does not uh, uh, sync your boat if you are a little off with the crossover frequencies. Uh, so if if it if it if your calculator gives you a 15.9 Henry value and you can find only a 15 Henry, do not despair. You can easily adjust the value of your uh, high pass filter, and uh, you can uh, do it and and optimize your network easily. But let's see what happens if you want to cross it over at lower frequencies. Let's say you want to add the sub and you want to roll it off at 100 hertz. Then it's giving you very, very large values, 160 Henry's. Yes, you will need an inductor of 160 Henry's to do that for you, and which is an extremely high inductance. And that is not that easy to find, really. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, I hope this helped everyone a little bit on uh, how to design your passive crossover in at the line level. So now let me just give you a tip uh, on how to make this easier for you. Uh, that if your input impedance is lower, let's say only uh, like 600 ohms, because uh, often you can get uh, preamplifiers that have uh, like 600 ohm output and you use maybe an input uh, transformer in your amplifier like a 600 ohm to 10k or 600 ohm to 15k and uh, this is the Sakuma method to drive an amplifier by using an input transformer from a very low impedance to a, a lowish impedance. In this case, you see, you need uh, a little less than one Henry choke for that, one Henry inductor, 955 milli Henrys, even for a sub at, at first order. And, uh, and that is much more easily obtained. And, and if you want to special make one for yourself, then uh, companies will uh, cater to your wishes uh, at a much lower price cost compared to hundred hundred of uh, Henry's uh, price range. And you see, when you are in the 600 ohms range, you can use a 2-3 microfarad range uh, capacitance, which is uh, also uh, not, not such a big of a problem. It's a, like a very co common value range this range to use so that's just an idea for everyone so you if you have a sakuma style amplifier with an input transformer driving your input stage then you are back to normal world crossover values for your uh, input uh, crossover so thank you for tuning in please like and subscribe Bye-bye.